The moon is calling us back, not just to explore, but to stay. For the first time in over 50 years, NASA and SpaceX are teaming up to build a permanent lunar base powered by SpaceX's revolutionary starship. This isn't just a mission. It's a bold leap toward humanity's future in space. From transporting astronauts to constructing lunar infrastructure, Starship's the key to making it all happen. The challenges are immense, but the ambition is greater. So, how is SpaceX going to build the moon base from Starship? All will be revealed in today's episode of Alpha Tech. In its pursuit of lunar exploration, SpaceX and Elon Musk have set their sights on a monumental goal. We want to far exceed what NASA's asked us to do, and actually be able to put enough payload on the moon with enough frequency that you could actually have a permanent occupied moon base, Elon Musk said. This ambitious vision is called Moon Base Alpha, inspired by sci-fi, specifically the lunar base from space 1999. And the key player set to achieve this feat is none other than Starship, the world's biggest spacecraft. To be honest, this is a brilliant idea, as it fully leverages the versatile capabilities of Starship. SpaceX has designed a specialized version of the vehicle known as the Lunar Starship to fulfill the goal of reaching the moon and establishing a permanent architectural base on its surface. Unlike the version designed for Earth return, this lunar variant emits key features such as heat shields and aerodynamic fins. Since these spacecraft are not intended to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere, heat shields for re-entry protection and aerodynamic surfaces for Earth's gravity are unnecessary. Instead, the lunar starship is optimized to remain on or around the moon indefinitely, focusing on entirely lunar operations. However, Starship's tall shape presents a major challenge when it comes to setting up a base there. Moon's gravity is only about one-sixth that of Earth, meaning that a tall, narrow structure like Starship is inherently more prone to tipping over with even minimal lateral forces. This instability arises because the reduced gravity lowers the energy required to shift the center of mass, making the structure more susceptible to losing balance. Additionally, since the Moon lacks an atmosphere, there's no air resistance to help stabilize such structures further exacerbating the risk of tipping due to external factors like uneven terrain or even minor impacts from micrometeorites. Besides the challenge of the Starship lander, the lunar environment itself is also a major obstacle on SpaceX's path to the moon base Alpha, as well as for any space organization aiming for lunar conquest. The moon seems quiet and serene, but if you get closer and stay there, you'll find it is extremely harsh. Two primary threats are cosmic radiation and meteorite impacts. Unlike Earth, the Moon lacks both an atmosphere and magnetic field, leaving its surface unshielded from the constant bombardment of high-energy cosmic rays from the Sun and beyond. Prolonged exposure to this radiation can lead to severe health risks for astronauts, including increased chances of cancer and genetic mutations over time. Additionally, without an atmosphere to burn up incoming debris, the Moon's regularly hit by small meteorites, which strike its surface at high velocities, posing significant risks to structures and habitats. So, if SpaceX wants to build a human-inhabited outpost there on the Moon, it's got to find a way to mitigate the harshness of the Moon's environment. One of the most feasible ways to do this is using regolith, the Moon's loose surface soil, as a natural shield. Covering Starship with a thick layer of regolith, it's possible to mitigate the effects of both cosmic radiation and meteorite impacts. A regolith layer about 5 meters thick could provide effective radiation shielding, absorbing the harmful rays and greatly reducing the astronauts' exposure. This thick covering would also serve as protection against the smaller meteorites that impact the moon's surface daily, some of which can carry the energy of small explosives when they strike. The process of applying regolith to the Starship could be done using robotic systems, which would gather and pile the material atop the spacecraft. This layer of lunar soil would create a natural barrier insulating the inside of the Starship and making it safer and sustainable for long-term habitable moon missions. The use of regolith not only ensures the safety, but also utilizes local resources, reducing the need to bring additional protective materials from Earth. This approach is a practical and efficient solution to mitigate the inherent risks of the Moon's environment. So, after all, how will SpaceX and NASA build a base up there on the Moon? Starship will enable humanity to build a long-term base on the Moon, and if Elon's words stay true, it'll resemble the Moon Base Alpha from Space 1999. Fictional Moon Base Alpha is located in the Moon Crater Plato and constructed out of quarried rock and ores. Moon Base Alpha is 4 kilometers in diameter and extends up to 1 kilometer in areas below the lunar surface. 
The complex extends outward from the central main mission tower in a series of concentrically arranged curved structures connected by travel tube transit tunnels. Apart from the central tower, the surface buildings are two to three stories in height. Moonbase Alpha would become a vital node for SpaceX's space operations, serving as a starting and arrival point for moon missions. Elon's plans obviously far exceed NASA's goal for a lunar starship. This isn't the first time Elon has expressed interest in establishing a base on the moon. Back in 2021, Elon stated that he wanted to establish a long-term residency on the moon, stating, It's been almost half a century since humans were last there on the moon. That's too long. We need to get back there and have a permanent base on the moon. Again, like a big, permanently occupied base on the moon. SpaceX's Starship Lunar Base is that of a horizontal Starship HLS placed on the lunar south pole atop the Shackleton Crater. The base will be covered by a 5-meter layer of regolith, the material covering most of the moon's surface, to protect the base from radiation and micrometeorite impacts. Only the airlocks and nose hatch will be left uncovered from the regolith. One of the airlocks will be transformed into an observation deck that will have a permanent view of the Earth over the moon's horizon. Expansion possibilities will be available through the nose hat, with the interior having three levels spanning the entire length of the vehicle, including the form of methane and oxygen tanks. To accomplish this, SpaceX needs two variants of Starship. The first will be the basic variant of the HLS spacecraft. SpaceX won't need to go through the effort of constructing individual habitats on the moon because their Starship spacecraft itself will be repurposed into some of the most incredible lunar bases. When the HLS Starship lands on the moon, its cargo section will be separated from the fuel tank and offloaded using a mobile crane, which would have been delivered to the lunar surface on a previous flight. On the moon, this lunar hauler will transport the cargo section to a predetermined location at the base site. There, the moon crane will lower the large cargo section horizontally to the moon's surface, where it can either stand alone or be connected to other HLS cargo modules. Once in there, the cargo section will be covered in lunar regolith, providing shielding from radiation and those micrometeorites. With cargo modules secured, the next step will be to transform HLS into a permanent base. This process is ambitious. By tilting the towering spacecraft onto its side, SpaceX can maximize the available living space for future inhabitants. Standing vertically, Starship's layout limits the practicality of its interior, making it necessary to reorient the spacecraft horizontally to better utilize its full length. By doing so, the interior can be remodeled to accommodate the needs of astronauts for long-term lunar habitation, transforming it into a more functional and spacious moon base. The process of tipping the Starship over is complex, given the moon's low gravity and size of the vehicle. Several methods could be employed to accomplish this. One solution is using cables attached to the tip of the Starship, pulling it gently sideways to gain leverage and then gradually bring it down. Of course, this will require support from a crane. Meanwhile, a moon rover or electric winch could be rigged to these cables, generating enough lateral force to topple the spacecraft. Alternatively, the base of another starship could be anchored as a point of resistance, giving the necessary counterbalance for pulling the starship over safely. Once the spacecraft has been successfully tilted, SpaceX would proceed with removing the Raptors. After extraction, the low section of the HLS would be repurposed as part of a storage tank farm for the lunar base. The section would then be transported to a suitable location where it could either be laid horizontally and covered up with regolith for thermal insulation or left standing vertically. If kept upright, a protective canopy could be built to shield the tanks from direct sunlight, reducing the evaporation from cryogenic fluid stored inside. The remaining parts of Starship or an intact HLS Starship would then be repurposed into habitats positioned horizontally to maximize livable space. The vertical layout designed for transport would be reimagined to maximize space and comfort. A new floor plan would stretch along the length of the spacecraft, dividing it into functional sections. A research and science laboratory would occupy one area where astronauts would do their experiments and then nearby a communal recreation area complete with a mess hall and a kitchen, would offer space for dining and socializing. Other features would include sleeping quarters, a gym, sanitation facilities, all to be maintained in the lunar environment. After all, what we have is a horizontally oriented Starship, resulting in the creation of a continuous open floor plan. Starship can be converted into an efficient, fully equipped moon base. This config will give tons of space for storage beneath the main floor, ensuring that essential equipment and supplies are easily accessible. This innovative transformation of Starship offers a comfortable living space, enabling astronauts to thrive and survive on the moon as they explore the surface. The second variant of the one-way lunar Starship is based on the tanker variant designed to refuel depots in Earth orbit. 
Lunar facilities will require a substantial mass of volatiles to support their operations, particularly agriculture and industrial activities. The essential volatiles needed include hydrogen, methane, nitrogen, and water. Hydrogen serves as fuel or can be combined with oxygen generated from lunar regolith to produce water. Methane is used as fuel for starships returned to Earth. Nitrogen is crucial for agriculture and has various industrial applications. And if there's no nearby water source on the moon, water can also be transported by these tanker starships to support lunar development. Upon reaching the moon, the tanker and its volatile payload are integrated into the tank farm of lunar facilities. Starship's Raptor engines and any unnecessary flight control systems are removed for eventual return to Earth and use on future missions. In general, establishing a long-term base on the moon is a wise move for SpaceX. Humanity should have a moon base, cities on Mars, and be out there among the stars, Elon Musk said. He envisions a future where a fleet of starships will regularly travel to the moon, providing scalable support for a long-term lunar presence. The company's goal is to mass-produce thousands of spacecraft with the capability to manufacture and launch one starship a day, making lunar missions more frequent and cost-effective than ever before. The scalable approach would also enable more advanced infrastructure projects like sending fully-fueled starship tankers carrying hydrogen or constructing scientific outposts. As more starships arrive, a complex network of lunar operations could be established, with each contributing to the ongoing development of the moon base. By continuously launching starships, SpaceX isn't just aiming to build a sustainable lunar outpost, it's also laying the groundwork for an even more ambitious goal beyond the moon, Mars. That's all for today's episode. Thanks for watching and see you next time.